outside of the Security Council, and therefore it represents only the standpoint of those uh, who spoke. However, I would like to make the following comments. The Syrian government, as you know, has always expressed its reservation vis-à-vis -vis the work and undertakings of this so-called commission established by the Council on Human Rights. The Syrian government did so because from the beginning we said that this commission was established for political purposes to serve a hidden agenda of the handlers and masters of the terrorists who are targeting Syria, Syria the government, Syria the country, and Syria the people. This commission has been biased from the beginning. It didn't visit Syria. It met only with uh, people who live abroad and claiming to be opponents. And it did ignore always, until now, all the reports submitted to it by the Syrian government. If you go through this, the report of the Commission, you would see that it reflects the standpoints and the points of view of the so-called opponents outside of Syria, in the camps and elsewhere, in Turkey, Jordan, Lebanon and elsewhere. But it did neglect to mention any word on the thousands of papers and information and the plenty of information we provided to the Commission as a government for years. So this in itself indicates how biased this Commission is. Therefore, we think that the Commission is, a, is an integral part of the problem and is not a part of the solution uh, of the uh, crisis uh, in Syria. The Commission has been used by the influential guys in the Council in, of, on human, of Human Rights as well as on the, in, the Council, on, in the Security Council to harm the image of the Syrian government and to diabolize the actions of the Syrian government while dealing with this war of terror launched against Syria and the Syrian people and the Syrian government for four years. <clears throat> Before engaging in this uh, important exercise of question and answers, I would like to show you something very useful and very indicative. This is a book, an unusual book, 500 pages elaborated by the Syrian authorities on the foreign terrorists killed in Syria in the month of October 2013. One month, 2013, October. Foreign terrorists, only foreigners, coming from the same guys who, were, who are supposed to represent the Security Council and the Council on Human Rights. With photos, names, nationalities, These are the, some of them maybe were used as witnesses by this commission against the Syrian government. Many of them came from Jordan, who assumes the chairmanship of the Council on Human Rights, as you know. Many of them came from Saudi Arabia, from Libya, Tunisia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Australia, USA, Britain, France, Belgium, England, Germany, Italy, who else? Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Kyrgyzstan, Lithuania, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, Egypt, Palestinians, by coincidence, Lebanese, Canada. These are the Syrian opposition. These people, these foreigners, are the Syrian opposition that the Americans call moderate Syrian opposition. They are Australian, but they are moderate Syrian opposition. You like it, you dislike it, this is how the Americans present it. So these are 
Syrian legitimate opposition, democratic opposition, peaceful opposition. They may be Pakistanis, but they are Syrian opposition. And this mistake is being repeated unlawfully, impolitely, by high-level UN officials, such as the spokesperson of the Secretary General himself, who repeatedly considered the terrorists operating in the Syrian Golan occupied by Israel as Syrian armed opposition groups. While we all know, according to the Security Council reports, that these people are terrorists from ISIL and Al Nusra Front, who kidnapped UN staff from UNDOF upon instructions from Qatar. And their wounded guys are treated in the Israeli hospitals by the Israeli authorities. Still, the spokesperson of the Secretary General insists in considering these terrorists Syrian armed opposition groups. And the head of the Syrian armed opposition groups operating in the Syrian occupied Golan by Israel is, by coincidence, a Jordanian who used to be the right hand of al Zarqawi in Iraq. So something is wrong in here. Something hypocrite is taking place somewhere. People are misleading the members of the Security Council. Some people, influential guys, are misleading the media and the public opinion. They are dealing, equally speaking, with the Syrian government and the terrorist groups on an equal footing. Isn't a violation of the Security Council resolutions 2170, 2178, and 2199? We have just endorsed three resolutions in the Council on ISIL, on foreign fighters, on Al Nusra Front, on sponsoring terrorists through the Syrian Turkish border, on stealing antiquities and artifacts and cultural heritage. What are we doing with these resolutions in the Council? These should follow the words. We are the only government in this organization which is implementing these three Security Council resolutions. And here are the examples and the proofs and the evidences. We are the only government implementing these resolutions. So I'm, I'm once again reminding you that these 500 pages of terrorist photos covers only one month, October 2013. I will show you plenty of similar books updating these terrorist operations in Syria, upon instructions from their handlers and their masters, who are nobody else but some of these influential guys in the Security Council, as well as in the Council on Human Rights. Sure. Thanks a lot. Uh, I wanted to, I understand that you think the whole inquiry is, is biased from the beginning, but I just asked the, the commissioners whether anyone from the, the Free Syrian Army or other supposed, you know, moderate opposition groups so described are part of their report or listed in the names. And it didn't seem, they mentioned the Kurds. I wanted to know, do you, when you're talking about terrorist groups, are you referring to what are not just Nusra and Daesh, but the, the Free Syrian Army? And do you have any <coughs> comment on this new agreement between Turkey and the U.S. to begin training uh, fighters beginning in March, that at least as reported yesterday? You may remember that, according to the Pentagon estimates last year, there are 2,000 terrorist armed groups operating in Syria. That was the Pentagon estimates, not the Syrian government estimates. So according to the Americans, a year ago, they estimated that <coughs> sorry, there are <coughs> 2,000 <coughs> armed terrorist groups <coughs> operating in Syria. Of course, this figure multiplied with the time. Maybe they are nowadays 3,000 terrorist groups. These terrorist groups did not come to Syria by, through parachute. They came from Australia, they came from USA, they came from France, they came from Saudi Arabia, from Kuwait, 
from Qatar, from Turkey, they didn't come through parachutes. When a terrorist, Australian terrorist, leaves Sydney and found, find himself out of a sudden in Aleppo, could anybody explain to me how did he cross all these borders? How did he cross all these countries? How did he lure all these intelligence services on his way from Australia to Syria? Without being intercepted? How these thousands of terrorists cross our border coming from Turkey? Without being intercepted? Who sends these terrorists from all over the world? Who sponsors them? Who receives them at the airport of Ankara and Istanbul before escorting them to the Syrian-Turkish border? Who sent them from Lebanon and from Jordan inside Syria? Who are the victims in this tragic situation? Aren't they the Syrians, the Iraqis, and nowadays the Libyans and the Egyptians? I'm sure you heard what the Egyptian minister and the Libyan minister for foreign affairs and the Algerian also said yesterday in this council, in this chamber, on the situation prevailing in Libya. As if the Syrian ambassador was speaking in the council two years ago. They repeated what we, we kept saying for two years, three years, and four years. Now everybody is acknowledging the veracity, the accuracy, and the validity of what we kept saying for four years. But some of these people, influential guys in the council, still stubborn. They don't want to acknowledge that they are wrong. And their policies were wrong vis-a-vis -vis Syria. This is a war of terror launched against my country. Ambassador. Can I ask you about these secret lists that they have compiled and they say they are thinking of publishing? Are you worried that key officials of your government, of the military, even the name of President Assad, might be on that list? All this propaganda aims at diabolizing the Syrian government and misleading the public opinion. They did it in the past and they will do it in the future. What kind of credibility could we give to such documents when we know that the chair, I mean, the High Commissioner for Human Rights is Jordanian? That the chair of the Alliance of Civilization Forum is Qatari? That the UN Center to Combat Terrorism is sponsored by Saudi Arabia? That Turkey is hosting, will host the first UN humanitarian summit? What kind of credibility can we have in this organization when we give to these people these post important and crucial posts while their governments are deeply involved in the bloodshed of the Syrian people? This is what I can answer you. Please. Yeah. Uh, Caleb Maupin, Press TV News. Um, there have been some reports coming out that a lot of the money allegedly being raised for Syrian refugees is actually going to fund terrorism. Um, can you talk about this? And also, you mentioned that a number of the insurgent terrorists are from Jordan, um, and that you know I, there have also been reports that Zaatari refugee camp, uh, the United Nations refugee camp, is, is a recruiting ground for the terrorists. And is, is there any possibility that the UN is, in, in fact, enabling this, this terrorism to continue? Billion of dollars have been collected in the Gulf states. Billion of dollars have been collected in the Gulf states by so-called NGOs, charity organizations, but also by uh, foreign intelligence services to be sent to the camps as well as to inside Syria to instigate uh, uh, terrorist acts against the Syrian government. The Syrian government kept asking the Syrians living in this, these camps to get back to their country where the government will assume its responsibilities in hosting them the way we are doing it, actually, for millions of Syrians displaced internally. So we don't want to see any Syrian living abroad in these so-called camps, which are a, a, a territory for rapes, for early marriage for, for girls, for uh, training terrorists. It's a haven for 
training terrorists and, and recruiting terrorists and sponsoring terrorists from all over the world, actually, not only from amongst the, the Syrian community in this, living in these camps. So this issue is very important and very crucial. We shouldn't only focus on the form. We should focus on the substance. We should focus on those who are sending these billion of, of dollars from the Gulf states. Why they are sending these billion of dollars? Why they are imposing sanctions on the, on the Syrian people? Why USA, the Europe, European Union, and the Gulf states are imposing sanctions on the Syrian people? If they care about the Syrian people, they wouldn't have imposed sanctions on the Syrian people, which prevents uh, such sanctions that prevents the welfare of the Syrian people. So these countries, governments, are an integral part of the problem. They, they cannot be helpful to solving the uh, uh, humanitarian uh, uh, situation in Syria. They created this humanitarian situation in Syria by sponsoring the terrorists, by imposing sanctions, and by misleading the public opinion on the, on the real situation prevailing in, inside Syria. Last question, yes, Ambassador. Um, so as you know, there is new uh, attempt, new initiative by Stefan de Mistura regarding uh, the ceasefire in Aleppo. Do you think that this kind of uh, the, the, the activities of the uh, Commission of Inquiry may prevent this positive uh, initiative? We are uh, expecting the Mr. de Mistura to get back to the capital to brief the Syrian government about his uh, about the, uh, his consultations with the members of the Security Council. And then we will take it from there. Do you have any comment on this countering violent extremism conference that's been held in Washington for the last three days? I just wanted to ask your view of it. We were not invited to attend this uh, conference, number one. Number two, it is held out from outside the UN framework. Number three, it gathered uh, uh, part of the so-called uh, membership of the United Nations, not all the members of the United Nations. Therefore, it's not committing anybody uh, in this organization as a whole. It's not universal. It's not an international conference. It's similar to uh, 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 other conferences that dealt with the nuclear disarmament, for instance, or other issues uh, from outside the United Nations uh, framework. Unfortunately, the U.S. administration did not invite uh, some governments, including my own government, to attend this uh, conference. While, you know, Syria, Iraq, and other countries are mainly concerned with this uh, 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 terrorist uh, uh, phenomenon that is prevailing all over the world. What we warned against for years in this council and here, against the, uh, the terrorist activities prevailing in Libya since 2011. All the weapons, or most of the weapons, that ended up in Syria through Lebanon and Turkey came from Libya. And the UN uh, Subcommittee for Combating Terrorism issued a special report on this issue, confirming, confirming and corroborating what we kept saying, that these weapons came from Libya. Nowadays, people are saying, you know what? Libya is a chaos. Libya is a chaotic situation, and we need to deal with this uh, problem prevailing in Libya. We said it four years ago. We said it four years ago. But the result is thousands of our people who got killed with Libyan weapons, with Libyan so-called terrorist jihadists coming from Libya and Tunisia and elsewhere through Turkey and through Lebanon. Thank you. Ambassador, I have a question for you regarding the